Hello everyone, this is Fiona Apollo and I do art commentary. Well, we made it. This will be the final video of 2023. How's the year been for everyone? I feel like I've never stopped. There have been a lot of big milestones and life events happening these past few months. It's kind of unbelievable that I'm still here. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Anyway, today's video is dedicated to a very important and often crucial factor regarding a person's artistic journey and how they feel about their works. And it didn't feel like there was any better time than now to talk about it when a whole bunch of end of year holidays are coming up and people are having to be in the presence of those long dormant relatives. Yep, we're talking about art and families. I think everyone by now is familiar with that age old convention of parents in particular not really understanding their children's pursuit of their own happiness, especially when that relates to them pursuing a hobby or career career that they might perceive as a frivolous waste of time. I've heard it millions of times myself, so have my friends. All these little comments and subtle remarks that make you feel just that little bit more like you're doing something wrong by indulging in a creative endeavour. You even hear these comments from people who make art themselves, which is really weird. And let's just be upfront about it. Even if this was about something completely different, say you're pursuing an unconventional trade or doing a humanitarian degree in college or, god forbid, you start a YouTube channel, if your parents decide they don't understand or agree with your choice, even if they don't say anything directly, they have a funny way of making you feel terrible about it, almost like you're making a big mistake. And if your parents don't behave like this, well, we're gonna look into that too. There are plenty of families who support their loved ones' passions, and some are a bit more proactive about it than others. But I think what I also wanted to explore here is how different reactions and behaviours can potentially have a profound impact on you. Even people with parents who delve into the arts themselves can experience issues that are very particular and depend upon certain context. People don't often realise until much later how the small things can build up. So today, I'll be going through the different attitudes and perceptions of family members towards artistic pursuits, how these attitudes may have developed, what factors might be at play, and theorise on how both families and children can navigate them to minimise any potential clashes. In addition to my own curiosity on the subject, I've been made aware that some people do in fact watch my videos with their children, so I just want to make sure we approach this from both sides as fairly as possible, but also with that, please just know as a PSA that my channel is not actually child friendly, even though I do talk a lot about things like cartoons and certain content that does appeal to them. I am an adult, my discussions are intended to be adult oriented, and I talk a lot about the implications of things, some of which may not always be suitable for children under a certain age. TLDR, if you're going to watch my videos with your children, just make your own judgement calls about whether they're appropriate and check in with your kids every so often, okay? With that said, if you like what you're hearing, please consider liking and subscribing. Do any of your family members or guardians support your artistic pursuits? Do they have any themselves? Does does that affect how they see or talk about them? Please let me know, it's always really interesting to hear people's different experiences on stuff like this. Alright, let's get into it. Part 1. Capitalism Strikes Again so, I watched a TikTok not long ago relating to how parents in some countries, particularly the US, tend to resent their own children despite them making the decision to have a child to begin with, and how this resentment is deeply rooted in the psychological hold that capitalism plays in our lives. I don't know if you know this, but children are very, very expensive. If you live in the US, it can cost approximately $10,000 or more to give birth, and in the UK, childcare costs for things like daycare are some of the highest in the world. This, coupled with the fact that you are spending additional income to house, feed, clothes, and entertain them, causes many parents to expect their kids to grow up and return those investments in some shape or form. Which is how certain attitudes, depending on how money obsessed your parents actually are, can manifest in some pretty sinister ways. For a significant amount of Western, particularly white working class parents for example, this often includes either charging your child rent or even kicking them out of their childhood home once they reach 18, sometimes even 16, with the assertion that the house was never theirs to begin with, they are in fact just a guest. In my opinion, this is ghastly parenting actually by the way, you should not have kids if you're going to do this, but that's just me. This is obviously quite a drastic example, but it's also an unfortunately common one, and while I'm also aware that this happens among other cultures and races, I don't know enough about those particular family dynamics, so I'm not going to comment on them too thoroughly. What I will comment on though, is how parents across all kinds of cultures and nationalities will try to assert this return investment by urging their children towards so-called reputable careers such as becoming a lawyer, doctor, managing a company, or any other such career that correlates to a valuable set of skills or a high salary, or something along those lines. With this example, it's not strictly always to do with the children physically paying back some form of debt accumulated by them just existing, it's more so the prestige that comes with it. The sense of honour it brings, the bragging rights, the feeling of accomplishment, of satisfaction that comes with knowing you steered your child towards working hard and being successful, which by extension should also correlate to leading a comfortable life. 
And that by proxy also potentially means that you will be almost guaranteed a cosy retirement since your kids will be able to afford to look after you in your old age. This line of thinking convinces parents or guardians that the amount of money they have poured into their child will be worth it. The only issue with this, typically, is how it's approached. The problem with it is that, well, a lot of parents don't actually give their kids a choice in the matter, and will pile on the pressure of learning such skills from a young age before the child even has a chance to decide whether they like it or not. Depending on the child, some people do indeed want to become lawyers and doctors and be otherwise financially secure. But for others, feeling trapped within the confines of all these expectations and goals that you never really decided on for yourself can make you feel absolutely miserable. And no amount of financial security can make up for that. Money can't buy happiness. Money can help keep a roof over your head and put food in the fridge, don't get me wrong, and a lot of people would probably prefer to be miserable in a warm, well-lit home as opposed to a damp shack, but if you hate how you've achieved it, then no matter what you've achieved, you're still going to be miserable either way. So when a child decides that, actually, screw your expectations, I'm going to do what makes me happy, it can be a bit of a bombshell for the family. I think what also plays into this is whether your family is more community-oriented or individually-oriented. This can also come into what culture you come from, but for the most part, there are two types of people in the world, those who think of themselves and those who think of others. And I want to just say that thinking of yourself is not the horrendously selfish sentiment that people like to try and guilt you into believing it is. Thinking of yourself is a necessity just as much as anything else in life, and it's also just as important as thinking of others who might need your help for various things. You can't drag a sick person to hospital on a broken leg. Sometimes it's necessary to put a bit of distance between yourself and other people's expectations until you are better equipped to have a mature discussion and make sensible compromises. Don't just bend to their wills, but also don't just go full on no contact if it's something like a minor argument that can be patched up later on. It's quite a shame that people tend to think in extremes when it comes to things like this. People often tend to believe that the negatives of something will always outweigh the positives, which isn't really the case. You can't look after someone if you don't look after yourself, and after a certain point, where does the distinction lie between surviving and living? But then, even with that, you do also have the concern of actually surviving in a world where the arts are being continuously undervalued and artists are struggling more and more to make ends meet. As of writing this, Hasbro recently laid off over a thousand staff, many of whom are artists and are instead trying to sneakily rehire them for a fraction of the pay to retouch AI-generated images, instead of getting artists to draw things correctly from the beginning. It's becoming increasingly tricky to make a livable career out of art, depending on what it is. In my own opinion, when considering the most viable options in a creative career, it's looking more and more likely that you may either have to become extremely specialised in a specific field where there is more demand and not as much competition, or become your own boss instead of working for a company. Both of these are going to require a high amount of discipline, a lot of patience, good organisation, and a ton of grit. It also requires a strong conviction of knowing precisely what you want to do. But the only issue with this is that a lot of young people don't know what they want at certain ages. Like, you can't just expect someone at 16 to decide what they want to do for the rest of their lives and stick to it. What if it doesn't work out? What if something happens? What if they change their mind? But most importantly, these options can often be quite expensive, both in time and money. So it's no wonder that most who are able to go down those paths either already have a stable background, or the support of the people around them, oftentimes both. So do a lot of artists actually have this support behind them? Part 2. The Apple and the Tree so I am extremely happy to report that, at least as far as my own community is concerned, when I asked people whether their families supported their art endeavours, a good chunk said that they did have support in various quantities. And while this is most likely due to the people within my community already having a vested interest in art, it was still nice to hear that there was a varying degree of support and little pushback. And I think it speaks to the perceptions people have, especially regarding other people's families. There can be many factors that play into why this is. People tend to be more supportive of someone's passion the younger they are, it can depend on how financially stable the family is, and where in the world they live will probably affect the type of art they're interested in and the cultural attitudes surrounding it. There were some interesting perspectives from a few people that I also hadn't previously considered. For example, in cultures where the men are expected to be the sole providers for their families, it's a lot more accepted for women to have an artistic outlet and for it to not be ridiculed in favour of trying to turn it into a job or a side hustle. But in that same vein, men are also discouraged from pursuing art as a career. I think there are probably some conversations to be had about 
about that, such as art being perceived as a woman's hobby and not being given the appreciation it deserves. And this is definitely something people are noticing more as we look back at old homemaking hobbies like knitting. The amount of artistic mastery I have seen in the form of a hand-me-down shawl lovingly knitted by someone's grandma 40 years ago honestly rivals some textile artwork being pushed out by high-profile professionals as far as technical skill is concerned. Like, I'm not even kidding. Obviously, that's kind of a sweeping statement, and it's more the interpretation of art that counts rather than the technical skill, but you get my point. Family matriarchs never really get a chance to have their personal creative outlets appreciated, and it kind of stinks. I really hope that can change soon now that Gen Z appears to have a bigger interest in knitting and the like. I also wanted to get a feel for how people with artistic family members interpreted things, because I feel like this also presents an interesting set of circumstances. The arts is probably one of the biggest industries for things like nepotism, but because of a whole myriad of factors, including but not limited to the type of art being made and how much it's valued, as well as whether or not having a parental link really does enhance your chances in a field that can often have really stiff competition in certain places, and of course the aforementioned capitalistic view on the arts in general, this felt like an interesting angle. What I also thought would be interesting is how many people felt like they were keeping certain types of arts within their families, as it were, and if many people wanted to branch out into different types of arts and still had their families support that. But I don't think the way that I phrased the question really came across with that, so we're not going to delve too deeply into it. I myself have a pretty artistic family, many of my family members are musicians, sculptors and painters, and I think what sparked my interest in this topic is that despite my family members obviously being very artistic, they're also kind of snobby about other types of art that don't meet their standards. For example, my dad didn't stop my decision to be an animator, but he vehemently refuses to see it as anything other than a children's medium, which is so frustrating. And for the longest time it gave me a bit of a complex where I felt like I couldn't share my enthusiasm for the medium with other people. I wasn't doing the right type of art, therefore I was still feeling kind of outcasted from the more mature discussions around artistic expression. It also doesn't help that every single one of my family members only do art as a hobby, not as a job like what I tried to do, which also made it sting a lot more when it didn't happen. For the most part though, I think that was a case of it being a more personal situation, and a lot of people who shared their thoughts pretty much asserted that their artistic family members wholeheartedly supported their endeavours into things like digital art and cartoons, which I'm really glad about. And to be honest with you, the whole nepotism thing only really comes into play if we're talking about the really high-end, nose-in-the-air kind of art scene that people with a lot more disposable income than the average Joe tend to indulge in. So don't worry, you're not a nepo baby if your mum ran an Etsy shop for a while. I'm also not sure if age might be a factor in that too, since the older you are, the less likely you are to really understand the appeal of things that cater to a younger generation, but it actually seemed like this is also becoming less of an issue now that we have a generation of parents, i.e. millennials, who engage with things like video games and animated shows themselves without any of that aloofness that previous generations had. There are of course still those who experience the hardships that come with families not supporting you, parents who tell you to toughen up or who praise someone to their face and ridicule them behind closed doors, and it is a shame that the support afforded to some can't always be done for others. So that's why it makes me really glad to see that even despite Despite that, there are people who go into making art for their own happiness and don't let negative feedback bog them down too harshly. Sometimes people can just be really cruel and want to bring you down for seemingly no good reason, and this can absolutely include family members. And it can feel a lot worse with them because, well, for the most part, you tend to be more stuck with your family members than you are with friendships, at least up until a certain age, and that kind of disapproval or harshness isn't something that people should have influenced their lifestyles and decisions, but it still happens. Sometimes a bit of hard rationality can be beneficial, but oftentimes coming down hard on something doesn't always have the preferred result, and you risk the person you're trying to persuade flinging themselves in the opposite direction just to spite you. So in short, don't be an arsehole. It can be extremely difficult, and it can be made worse if you experience things like low self-esteem, physical and mental illness, or other such obstacles, but the fact that you are still creating something, even if it's something small, even if you think it's bad, and even if you don't share it with anyone, that's already a step towards your artistic journey, and it's up to you if you want to take more, and not up to the people who say otherwise. Part 3. Hope for the future. This isn't really a discussion with an easy solution, or with any kind of solution to the underlying problem of a lack of support. Unless someone wants to take on the task of single-handedly dismantling capitalism and creating a utopia, family perceptions and opinions around the arts will always be subjected to the previous notions such as finances, culture, good old prejudices, and so on. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't hurt anyone, then why stop doing something that makes you happy just because they think it's a waste of time or aren't enthusiastic about what you do? You're the master of your own universe, and you can shape that universe in whatever way you wish. No one else will do that for you. Not your families, friends, celebrities, even well-meaning but sometimes headed YouTubers. <laughs> 
If you make art and it sparks that bit of joy, I'm happy for you. And if nothing else, I hope you can be proud of yourself too for what you've achieved. And I think that is it from me. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you for supporting me throughout 2023. For my last little tidbit before I leave you, I created an art piece for my own Draw That In Your Style challenge featuring my character Cinnamon as a way to showcase and appreciate the fantastic artists who have been shaping up their skills and sticking by me this past year. There were so many lovely submissions as shown on screen and I can't thank Thank all of you enough for taking part. This really has been a pretty great year for me and I really hope we can all keep doing our best in 2024. Please consider liking, subscribing and leaving a comment if you enjoyed what I had to say and stay safe everyone. I will speak to you very soon. Bye for now! Thank you.